Well, come on, let's give Jesus one more big hand clap in the house tonight. Amen. Listen, I'm super excited. How many of y'all believe that God's going to do something in our midst this week? Y'all believe that with me? Y'all believe that? Come on. We believe that. Amen. I found this. There's a couple different ways to do life and a couple different ways to encounter God. And uh, one is, they don't really encounter God like this, but one is some people lean back, right? They got their arms crossed. They're like, show me what you got. Show me what you can teach me. Show me what you can do. I preach all over the world. And sometimes in the crowd, I see people that are very receptive and hungry to get something from the word. And some people that hate uh, my sheer existence or their face looks like they hate it, right? So when you're, I see that all over the earth, right? So when they're leaning back, I know I'm probably wasting my voice right there. Uh, but then there are other people that don't lean back. And I want to be this second kind of person, right? There's other kind of people. What do they do, Pastor Jordan? Come on, he's already in a three-point stance down here, right? He's leaning in. And I think that God's always around ready to be accessed. He wants to connect with us more than we're ever going to want to connect with him, right? The Bible says, draw nigh unto God. He'll draw nigh unto you. He's already started the process. So what I want to encourage you to do tonight is I want you to lean in just just a little bit. Come on. I think you ought to just shift your weight forward by faith right now. Lean in. Now you're ready to receive from the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, I'm so excited to have my dear friend did a great job this morning. Uh, Preached about half of the service. I preached the other half. Uh, Fought a war and he's won in Wasilla, Alaska. Built the largest church house in the state of Alaska. And I'm telling you, I'm impressed what God's done there. And it's only just begun. He's got a voice goes around the world, getting larger for the kingdom of God, that voice, every minute. It's going to cut through the darkness, and it's going to bring great light. He's doing it tonight in Amarillo, Texas. Y'all welcome my friend and pastor and prophet Daniel Bracken. What's up? Look how good he looks. Come on. You look good. million bucks. I got to get a new tailor or something. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together for your pastors. Come on, Pastor Appreciation Day. You can do a little bit better than that, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now give it up for Jesus all across the place. Come on, online, wherever you are, give them a crazy praise. Yes. Oh, God. We love you. We bless you. We worship you. Turn to about three or four people and say, brace yourself. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, get ready. (laughs) My son on the keys and uh, my beautiful wife, no doubt, tuning in right now. She preached in Wasilla. And uh, Jeremy Robinson, a dear friend of ours online. And uh, we're so blessed that you're here with us tonight. Are you ready for something? You know, Pastor started saying and talked about leaning in. You know, when you do public preaching, anybody ever just gone crazy like at an airport or done anything crazy like that? Anybody ever? It's the same thing in churches. It's just like when Jesus was on the cross. You got one person on the right that's like, oh, remember me. And then the other person's mad. It's like, if you are the son of God. It's the same thing in church services. But I just believe that people are going to lean in like Pastor said. And you're going to receive something. I believe that your life is going to be changed tonight. I believe that God is going to touch you, minister to you. If you've come in need of healing, you come to the right place. If you come in need of breakthrough, this is a house of breakthrough. Whether I'm here or not, this just is a house of breakthrough. I've got something in my heart to preach to you here and we're going to get into it in just a moment. Lift your hands to heaven and just, we had wonderful worship, but just want to pause for just a moment longer. God, we love you. We worship and bless you. We acknowledge you as the source of life. We acknowledge you as the reason that we live because without you, we were dead, lost in our sin. God, thank you for your presence that fills this place and floods our hearts. Touch every hungry heart. Touch every man and woman and child. God, be glorified tonight. We've made room. we made room for you tonight to come. We've put aside the things we do regularly each week to be here tonight 
to honor you at his conference. You are him. And we pray, come now, Holy Spirit, and have your way. We lift up Israel. Come on, just lift your voices for a moment. We lift up Israel to you. If you have the freedom to pray in the spirit, go ahead and do it right now. Lord, we pray from Isaiah 62, verse six, oh, your walls, Jerusalem, on your walls, O oh Jerusalem, you've appointed watchmen. And this is a house, this is a watchman house even for Israel and for America. Day and night, they'll never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourself. Give him no rest until he makes Jerusalem the praise of the earth, Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. God, we pray for that. We pray, oh God, pour out your spirit in Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. One more scripture, Isaiah 62, verse one. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. Come on, lift your voice for a moment. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. As they're about to march into Gaza, God, we don't wish death on anybody, but evil needs to be dealt with. Evil prospers when good men do nothing. For Zion's sake, we'll not hold our peace. For Jerusalem's sake, we will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness. The Gentiles shall see your, see your righteousness. Verse 4 of Isaiah 62. You should be called Hepzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, verse 5, so your God rejoices over you. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never hold their peace till he makes Jerusalem the praise of the earth. God, again, intervene right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now give God a crazy hand clap. Praise. Let's turn to 2 Kings. We're going to get right into the Word. 2 Kings chapter 13. I have a powerful passage of Scripture that's on my heart. It's going to help you, I believe. If you can get a hold of what I preach and teach to you tonight, it's going to really change your life. It's going to mark you. It's going to mark your family. It's going to mark your business. It's going to mark your, mark your church. It's going to mark your life. Back home in Alaska... We, we stand for the reading, reading of the word. I'm going to ask you to do that in just a moment. Greetings to Pastor Karen. Greetings to my beautiful daughter, Hannah, to be married November 30th to Derek Johnson. We're very happy about that. It's always good when you're happy about the... Amen. Can I get a better amen? All right. We, we prayed since she was born. And uh, when she was growing up, and same thing for Daniel especially for my daughter, I said, daddy's going to pick your husband. Repeat after me, daddy, that's right, daddy, going to pick, going to pick your husband, the husband, that's right. And then as she got older, she said, I would say, who's going to pick your husband, honey? She said, you are, and I'm going to help you. I said, okay, that'll work. Then she got a little bit older. I said, who's going to pick your husband? She just says, I am, but I want your blessing. I said, that's good. That'll work. <laughs> and so she has my blessing. I'm excited about that. This passage has affected my life profoundly. And if you could get a hold of what I'm about to teach you, as I said, it'll change you. God moments. There are God moments that come. They never come again. That's a the witness from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Stand up on your feet. We're in a God moment right now. It's got to be like hail something. Hallelujah. Glory to God, it's not a tornado. But may we have one in the spirit. Second Kings chapter 13, verse 14. Are you all there? Say amen. Now, Elijah had been suffering from an illness from which he died, which is kind of crazy because I mean, he's this amazing prophet, man of God, dies from, healed so many people, he dies of an illness. 
Jehoash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha said, get a bow and some arrows. And he did so. Take the bow in your hands. He said to the king of Israel, when he had taken it, Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window, verse 17, he said, and he opened it. Shoot, Elijah said, and he shot. Quote, the Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Aram. Elijah declared, you will completely destroy Aram at Aphak, verse 18. Then he said, take the arrows, and the king took them. Elijah told him, strike the ground. So he struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him, and he said, you should have struck, the, you idiot. I'm, I'm adding that part. <laughs> you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated a ram and completely destroyed it. But now you'll defeat it only three times. Elisha died and was buried. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this moment, this time that we have tonight. We'll never come again. We stand here in, in time. You are outside of time, yet you're intimately involved in time. Come and have your way. And may we never be the same. Release revelation that causes a revolution in the hearts of your people. I pray, equip your people, your holy ones, your saints with biblical truth that they would never miss. We would never miss these moments that come and never come again. God moments, divine timing. It's key to the blessing, key to fulfilling purpose and destiny. We thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. You may be seated. I have on my wrist, maybe some of you have on your wrist watch, chronometer used to be called. The ancients didn't have watches. They had sundials as times and seasons. They judged time very differently than you and I do. We know that service t started tonight at 7. It didn't start at 7.05. It started at 7 o'clock. I'm a stickler for being on time. And that's because I just believe that we should be on time. I believe that excellence, how many of you know he's an on-time God? And I believe that excellence is expressed in being on time. If you're late all the time, it means that you think your time is more important than everybody else's. Bump your neighbor and say, he's not talking to me right now. <laughs> so in, El in Kings, Alaska, and, and Kings, Alaska is a, great, is a part of Kings Cathedral and Chapels, uh, moving towards 700 extensions. I don't even know how that happened. When I came, there was three. And uh, when I came into our church in 1992, which is a minute ago, I crawled in just about. I was a broken, broken, broken man. And God radically delivered me, radically saved me, radically healed me, filled me full of the spirit of God, gave me encounter after encounter. I couldn't believe they allowed me to be in the choir. And then I, after that, I couldn't believe they allowed me to be a life group, uh, in a life group. You know, life groups are those small groups, Bible studies, you all have those. Are the best way to be disciples is in a small group, I believe. I mean, this is great. Service is great. Don't miss it. It's vital. But one-on-one, -on -one you can ask questions. And I was like a small group leader's nightmare. How do you know it's the Word of God? Prove it to me it's the Word of God. How do you know Jesus is God? How, about, how many of you know there's no bad questions? Go ahead and ask them. As long as you don't have a bad heart that when you hear the truth, it doesn't turn. And I was just desperate for God. And so I'm, I've caused all kinds of problems. And, and uh, I'm sure they talked about me in the inner office, all that, that Daniel guy. He's got issues. <laughs> you want to hear a funny story? Was that years later, in fact, it, it's still true today. I used to hear doctors say, there was one of my staff, when he came, he was brain damaged and God healed him. And I used to think to myself, who's he talking about? <laughs> and so finally I asked him, I, I said, you know, I... You said it again today, and he's preaching, and he shared about one of his brain-damaged pastors who got healed. I said, who's that? He says, you. <laughs> I said, I wasn't brain-damaged. He says, yeah, you were. I'm like, I was? He's like, yes. He said, but you're not now, son. And he patted me on the back. 
Listen, if you'd be faithful, if you, if, I, I just believe that when you come to church, it's not, it's not just a once a week thing. You must just submerse into the things of God and get transformed. You need to learn to change the way that you think. This is a powerful, powerful passage. And, and, and in it, it it's going to change the way you think about time. Again, I came in 1992, and there was three extensions back there. We call them extensions, campuses. Before it was cool to plant churches, you know, in one church in different locations. Before that was cool, they were doing that, you know, in, in Maui in 1990s, 1991. Pardon me, 1982, 83 was the first extension. I got there in 92, there was three of them. Now there's almost 700. And it's just amazing. And I'm telling you, what God is doing in his church is, is astounding. And it's going to grow. It's going to be this, it's this, I said it this morning, it's progressive apostolic vision. And he set you up. Come on, bump your neighbor and say, you've been set up. But one of the things we found at King's Cathedral and chapels, one of the things I've found as I've pastored now for going on 24 years, 23 years, is that timing, you ever heard that expression, timing's everything. Timing is very important. The right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. But the right thing at the right time releases God's plan and purpose. In fact, that's what makes it right. It's a number of words in the Greek. Chronos or chronometer, as I said, comes from the word chronos. It's time in succession. No particular time. It's just in succession. It's 7 o'clock now. 24 hours from now, it'll be... 7 o'clock, 7.44 to be exact. There's nothing on Netflix. Settle in. We're going to preach and pray and prophesy for about three hours tonight. I'm just kidding. I don't know what's going to happen. Honestly, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to lift your hands to heaven. Holy Ghost, have your way. So there's Kronos. Then there's, there's Kairos. You've, I'm sure, preached on it, Pastor. It's where time and destiny meet. It's Kairos, that Kairos moment when you were 10 years old and you woke up on Christmas morning and underneath the Christmas tree was that, that special gift that you harassed your parents about and you opened it up and there it is, that, that sailboat, that RC car, that, that doll, that whatever you were believing for, there it is, you were 10. You got the puppy, you remember the puppy? Oh, and the dog and he came and... I, it's, it never comes again. It's a moment in time that never comes again. In Acts chapter three, I think there's five Greek words for, for time, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't go look at that too much. But in Acts chapter three, there's another word called horeos. Horeos. It also means beautiful. You know what happened in Acts three? In Acts 3, at the, at the hour of prayer, Peter and John go, and there's this man who's brought daily to the gate called Beautiful, or the Horeos Gate. Jesus walked by this guy, his, his whole earthly ministry. It's a wonder that neither, never Jesus did he heal him. He never did. We don't know why. But when Peter and John saw him, silver and gold have I none. How many of you know this text? But such as I have, I think the church has forgotten what we have because silver and gold ain't going to fix America. But such as I have, the power of the Spirit of God, an outpouring, a reformation, an awakening, an enlightenment, that will change our nation. As it's done at other times, God, do it here. Do it now. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and and walk, and they took him by the hand, and they jerked him up to his feet, and his ankles were made strong. He was completely healed. The Horeos gate, the gate called beautiful, the right time gate. 5,000 people come to Christ. It was the perfect time for him to be healed. It was the perfect timing. And maybe you have things in your life where you're like, I wonder when that's going to happen. When is my time? I will tell you, if you make God your goal, you will never miss the timings of God. And I love, when, I love what he said uh, to the apostles, to the disciples. He's talking to them, and he, they're like, is it this time that you're going to restore the kingdom? And he says, it's not for you to know the times and seasons, Pastor Jordan. But you will be endued with power. What kind of answer is that? 
Is this the time? What time, what time is it going to be? It's none of your business. It's pretty much what Pastor Jesus says. But you'll be endued with fire, power. When you get so full of God, it doesn't matter what time it is because it's God time. When you're so full of the Spirit, God puts things in place. You need to be aware that there are times and seasons in God that'll never come again. And this is one of those moments in this text. It never comes again. His church, this house, this vision is in a moment just like that. It's a time where God's about to accelerate the vision, accelerate the church. This building's far too small. Structures are being put in place divinely by God. I'm telling you, church is too small. And God is going to release his power in an unprecedented way through a people who will believe God. If you're here and you need a miracle, you've come to the right place. But if you've come thinking that it's coming to this great well to get your miracle all the time, you've missed it. Because God wants you to drink in such a way from this great well. And it is a great well. It is a great house. It is a great church. And these are anointed pastors and leaders, yes. But God wants you to drink in such a way that you become a well for somebody else. He wants you not to just be coming to seek a drink, but to receive a drink, to receive transformation. To receive impartation so that when you go out into the highways and byways, people can receive healing, people can receive deliverance, people can receive a word from God, that you are breakthrough. Jesus in you is greater than, than the man that's in them. Come on, he who is in you is, come on. God is wanting to pour out his spirit. You need to understand that. But you can miss moments like this. There's people watching Netflix right now. You know, they've had said, well, you can't have no Sunday night church because they ain't no one going to come and you're gonna, it's going to be like exhausting the saints. Well, I've found this. I've found that people, when they say it's family time, they're in the four corners of their home all watching different Netflix accounts, defiling themselves when they can be in the house of God. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but lift your hands to heaven. Come on, say it's the right time. Come on, say it's a divine time. Absolutely. So are you aware that there are moments like that? And there are. There clearly are. The key to releasing God's power and blessing is understanding timing. Let's look at this text. Elijah is, is dying and desires to leave a blessing for his nation. He's going to pass, which to me is like, an oxymoron. I mean, how is this the man who raised the dead and heals the sick and set the captives free? Elijah, the mighty man of God, with the double portion, is now dying. Because everyone's going to die. Bump your neighbor and say, one day, you're going to pass. Yeah, that's good. It's good to be aware of your mortality. That's why I love funerals. I love funerals and where people are saved. Don't make your pastor do a funeral for you if you don't, aren't born again. That's the most difficult I hate doing funerals where you're not sure if they went to heaven or not. It's good to take stock in your mortality. He dies. But before he dies, he wants to release this blessing. And the king cries, verse 14, my father, my father. You all see that? Verse 14, my father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. His eyes are open and he's having a supernatural experience, really. And he's seeing the end of his prophet. And the reaction to, to the king is, it's a little unusual because if you look in the previous verses, the guy wasn't exactly godly. But the prophet wants to leave a blessing for him. Even though he's not ungodly, he loves his nation. He loves Israel. He wants to release a blessing. And so he sets up this, this blessing, this blessing for his nation. And it's this divine moment. They enter into this divine prophetic encounter. And we read it in the text. The prophet tells him to pick up a bow. So he picks up a bow. He tells him to get an arrow. And he takes an arrow. And he lays his hands. Jordan, you help me. Pastor Jordan, you help me out. He, he lays his hands on the king's hands. Go ahead like you're drawing a bow. So the prophet comes and he lays his hands on the king's hands. And he's like, shoot it. And he looses that arrow 
And he says, this is the arrow of victory. So it's a supernatural thing that takes place, a prophetic act. I'm not going to use you for this next part because it's terrible. Because <laughs> the lazy, good for nothing, lack of enthusiasm in the king is astounding. And as a result, he does not receive the fullness of the blessing of God. So it's a supernatural arrow. And the prophet says, now, take more arrows and strike your arrows to the ground. Now, striking the arrows to the ground is shoot them in the ground. An ancient, an ancient uh, action for war would be to shoot your arrow into the ground of the land that you're about to attack. So that's the picture. And he tells them to do it. And the king's like, okay. The arrow, yeah. Okay, that, out the window, yeah, all right. And so he draws back and he shoots it. And he shoots three and he's like, Anything else you want me to do? And the prophet's like, what the heck's wrong with you? No, this is the Bracken version. Like, have you bumped your head? You're an, you're an idiot. And, and the king had to be like, what? Wait, hey, wait a minute. No, sorry, I'm so sorry. Can we try that again? He doesn't get to do it again. He doesn't get it. He's the God of the second chance. Yeah, he's the God of the second chance, but you might have missed a whole section of your destiny by not nailing it on the first one. I'm thank God for this. I don't know how many chances I've had. I love what, I love what the Lord spoke to me years ago. I, I think I might have gotten a little bit too big for my britches. We were, ha we're having an outpouring in Alaska. It's amazing, not unlike what's happening here. A number of years ago, I'm, I was like, oh God, this is amazing. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you weren't my first choice. I'm like, what? I wasn't? says, no, you weren't my first choice. You just said yes. I'm like, that'll work for me. I'm going to keep saying yes, Lord. Come on, say yes, Lord. You start thinking you're the God's man or God's woman of power for the hour. Or you're the one. You've lost your mind. God can, God can raise up some. There's people underneath bridges that can preach, pray, prophesy, handle finances better than you. And come on, can do better than you. Come on, come on. It's God's mercy. It's God's grace. Keep saying yes. Come on, somebody say yes, Lord. It's this incredible moment, this hand-to-hand -hand impartation. It says in 1 Timothy 4, 14, don't neglect the gift which is given you through prophecy when the body of elders lays hands on you. 2 Timothy 1, 6, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. The apostle Paul writes to the church in Rome, chapter one and 11, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. The ministry of laying on of hands you see here in the Old Testament certainly takes place in the new. The writer of the book of Hebrews says it's an elementary teaching. We go to the book of Deuteronomy, you see, that, you see that Joshua was filled with wisdom because Moses laid his hands on him. In other words, he had wisdom because Pastor Mo put hands on him and prayed. In other words, there's an impartation of wisdom from Pastor Moses into Joshua. And without that, Joshua would not have the wisdom. There are things that happen in the spirit supernaturally through the laying on of hands, through impartation, through transference. The anointing is transferable. It's like electricity. And there's moments that come you know, you've been in them services where Pastor Brian's just peeled the paint off the walls or preaching some crazy word. And then there's an altar call. And for whatever reason, you're like, don't want to go. But then you realize towards the end of the service, oh, I should have answered that. And so then you come up, well, you're late. Now, a good pastor, which he is, will pray for you anyway. But I will tell you, there's moments of power, moments of transference, moments of impartation in altars, in services. Right now, some of you are on your phone and you're texting. You're not even listening to one stinking thing I'm saying. Some of you are online. Listen, online church is great. It's not the same thing as being here. Thank God for all. It's information. It's wonderful. And I believe there can be an anointing in services. I've gotten touched by God. But you could turn me off right now if I get it, start getting up in your grill. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I feel led to go to the fridge or there. <laughs> get ministered to by a glass of chocolate milk and a chocolate chip, hey, chocolate chip cookie. 
And you miss your Kairos moment. You, you, you miss your, your, your timing in God. This king missed it. And you want it to come back. And you're thinking, well, can, can you pray for me now? And I, I, This happens all the time. We have powerful services, people healed, people touched. We had one lady, this happened just recently. We were worshiping and power of God hit the place. And I had a lady come up, called out a word of knowledge for, for deaf ears, if anybody had deafness, to respond. So this lady comes up and she had stone deaf in her right ear, her, her right ear. And I prayed for her, in Jesus' name be healed, ear open, deafness go, amen. And I said, did anything happen? How are you doing? She goes, no, it's, it's still, I'm like, I did, you know what those evangelist guys do? I did that. Can you hear anything? And she, she's like, no. I'm like, okay, let's pray again. And I prayed, oh God, in Jesus' name, prayed a little bit different, prayed, amen. And I went to move to the next person. It's not like I had a mic. We were just praying for people. And she yells, ah! And I come back, she goes, something, something happened, something happened. I said, oh, yes. So I'm like, wham. No, I didn't lick my finger. Pastor Brian might have done that. I didn't, yeah, I didn't do that. I gave her the wet willy from the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Twisted that thing. <laughs> Here, it's like this. It's like, watch. No, okay. I didn't lick my finger, but I stuck my finger in, in her ear. I don't know why I did. I just did. It just happened. And I prayed in Jesus' name, ear open, and she freaked out. She's like, ah, I can hear. I can hear. And the whole place went nuts. I said, she can hear. I said, can you hear? She can hear. I can hear. Everybody's like, ah. It released faith. It was a Kairos moment. There were some people watching Netflix that night that had deaf ears, could have got healed. I remember praying for people, and I looked back across the church and I saw this precious lady who I've known had been a part of our church for 12, 13 years. She has stage four cancer. Her bones are riddled with cancer. She is, it's all inoperable and impossible and they're just like, you know, you, they put a time stamp on her. Don't let anybody put a time stamp on you. And I thank God for modern medicine, but they're practicing. And I believe in God's word. I believe that by his stripes we're healed. Don't you let anybody put a stamp on you. Come on, I've got divine healing. Say it. I've got divine health. I've got divine healing. Say it. I've got divine health. I've got divine healing. Come on, I'm gonna live for 120 years preaching, praying, prophesying. So this lady's there and she has overcome insurmountable odds. Her bones are so brittle that She's broken her back twice, I think. Twice or three times. She's broken her legs, broken her arms. She's like, she is so fragile because she's riddled with cancer and we're believing for her to be healed. She shouldn't even be in the service, but she is. She watches at home. She makes it when she can. And I see her and she's glowing. What do you mean? Isaiah says that those that look to him are radiant. There's, there was a radiance about her. And I noticed it and I said, what is going on with you? And she gets out of her seat and she says, Pastor, when you were praying for healing, I had my hand inside a hole in my hip. I had a tumor in my hip that created a hole. There's no bone there. And I had my hand in the hole in my hip. And I was praying, oh God, can you right now in Jesus' name. And Pastor, I felt bone come underneath my hand. It pushed out and all the pain left. And that's when you looked over and said to me, what's going on? And, she, and I said, whoa, that's intense. Now you gotta know that it was just like shaking. Power, the power of a testimony. And she says, I feel like I can run. I said, that's nice. There'll be no running tonight, amen? Because I'm afraid, like she had faith to run. I thought she'd snap her legs off and fall on the ground. I'm like, oh, no running tonight, don't I? So I was like, I just wanna run. I said that. That's nice. I said, hallelujah, praise God, amen, praise the Lord. And I just moved on and she, she didn't run, she wanted to run. Well, I got to preaching and she wasn't there. Well, I forgot about it, got to preaching, preached some more. 
Then suddenly, towards the end of the service, she's back, and she even looked better. I said, what is going on with you? She, I called her up again. She said, you know, I wanted to run, Pastor. I'm like, I know you did. She said, so I know you didn't want me to run because you were nervous or something that I was going to get her. I said, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, honestly, you may be like, to be really so spiritual. No, I wasn't. I felt like the Lord didn't want you to run. <laughs> oh, shut up. I thought she'd snap her legs and fall right there. I had no faith that she was going to be healed. She said, but I really wanted to run. I'm like, okay. She said, so I went into the lobby. Now, my lobby's massive. She said, so I've been running back and forth on the lobby ever since. <laughs> lobby's, the lobby's like a giant basketball court. It's 11,000 square feet. So she says she'd been running back and forth, and she's just like, I can run. I'm like, you can run, huh? She's like, <laughs> I'm like, well, get it. Coach, she takes off running. While she runs, I don't know, I was just nervous. She turned the corner. I'm like, <laughs> and she comes, she comes to full circle. I kind of grabbed her. We're not doing two laps, amen. Praise God. And the place went ballistic and it released power. There's transference of faith. When you see somebody get touched by God, healed by God, when you see God's power put on display, it does something. You need to feed on God's faithfulness. Feed on his word. You need to submerse yourself into the things of God. You want to become a spiritual athlete and change your world or change your region or change your, you know, the, the business that you're in or change your family. But my God, you can't even crack open the word and be faithful to church week in, week out and expect that you're going to be walking on water. That's not how it works. You got to renew your mind. And there's moment, this conference, you didn't have to be here tonight, but you're here tonight. Why? Because you're like, man, I want something from God. And tomorrow night, and Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, if you will come over these next nights expecting God to do something for you, power will be released into you. You will be a new person. You will be different. You will be changed. And it's crazy even though that Elijah defines this moment for the king which I have just defined these next moments, these next few days for you. Elijah defines this for the king. He doesn't understand and he, he doesn't get it. The king casually strikes the ground and Elijah's angry. I don't know why he casually did it. Maybe he didn't believe the prophetic. I don't believe in prophecy. It's too late for you to try to talk me into that. I've seen it in the word and I have too many experiences. The whole building that we just finished, 73,000 square feet, is built on prophecy. That's how it happened. Divine, supernatural. Timings as well. I've told the story here before, but on the way home from 2014, from watching that movie, what was that movie called? It's The Son of God. We're driving home, my son, who's on the front row, says, Dad, we need to go to the old church property. It's a property that we used to own that we sold 10 years previously and it had sat there empty for all those years, 10, 11 years, 12 years. I said, no, I don't want to go to the church property. I want to go home and have a nap. It's, it was a Monday, which is a glorious thing that a lot of pastors do is napping is from God. Come on, somebody say amen. Some of you sleep through your assignment. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about getting rest when you need it. And the family being unanimous wanted to go and dad was the big jerk. I want to go home. Everybody wants to go to the old church property. I'm like, oh God. Okay, let's go. I didn't want to go. When we went, we rolled on. I stepped out of my truck and the power of God hit me as soon as my feet touched the ground. It was parked in front of the old church building. It was a barn that we renovated that held about 80 people, maybe 100. Without going into the full detail story. It had homeless people living in it. I went in with my children after making sure there was no vagrants that would cause a problem, making sure I didn't have to hurt anybody. <laughs> and I walked in with my kids and I stood where the in, in the sanctuary where the pulpit used to be. And I looked out over this dilapidated, broken down place with F-bombs all over the wall, tagged, defiled, nasty. My two kids there, and I said, well, kids, the chairs were like about here. The sound booth was up there. And I realized that we shouldn't even have a church. 
because of some of the things that happened. Our church shouldn't exist. The devil tried to take our church out, almost won, but he lost. He'll, and he'll always lose. If you stand, if you agree, if you, if you contend. As I'm standing there, I said, oh God, thank you that you've allowed. And the Lord spoke to me, interrupted my little Thanksgiving prayer and said, I'm giving you the property back. Loud, it was so loud, I asked the kids, did you guys just hear that? They said, uh, -huh, no, nope. I'm like, okay. My next thought is that's impossible. It was for sale for $4 million. Ain't buying no $4 million piece. Of, $4 million now is chump change, but, but it was for sale for $4 million. I walked out and I thought, my God. I called a real estate guy in our church. He called on it. It had gone back to the bank on that very day. It went back to the bank. Long story, a little longer. We picked it up for a million dollars and made three million in one day. In one day, we made three million. Now, before you think, oh, that's because you're Pastor Bracken. What are you talking about? I crawled out from under a, a, a trash can. It's God. I said, it's God. And if you learn to tune your ear and learn to, learn to be enth enthusiastic, not lethargic, not lazy, but filled with passion and zeal. The king had no zeal, had no passion. I've had people tell me, you're a little extra. I'm like, well, you're a little dull. <laughs> Why, let me ask you this. Why does God allow for that to take? Why doesn't he just do it, Pastor Brian? Why doesn't he just show up and give us a new building or give us a thing? Why? Why? Because he partners with us. He partners with people. And if you will understand to the degree of your obedience, to the degree of your passion in obeying God will be the degree that God releases his promise. Man, I just said something. I'm going over here. <laughs> to the degree that you obey God, to the degree that you enthusiastically with zeal obey the word of the Lord will be the, to the degree of the release of the, pro, the promise and the power. If you don't, if you don't agree, if you, if you don't, come on, you got to shake off that lethargy. You got to shake off that apathy. You got to shake off that he those heavy hands. You got to learn to fight. You got to learn to get some grit. You got to learn to say, I am not taking it anymore. I'm can, the Lord says, I'm I'm not backing off. I'm going to loose my arrows over and over and over and over and over and over again till he splits the eastern sky. Come on, get some fire in you tonight. And I think that that's one of the ways that the Lord says that we're important to him. You're important to the plan of God. God's, if, if God's going to do what he said he's going to do in Amarillo which I promise you is a, many generations of prophetic words over this city. Many. If God's going to do that, he's going to have to find a people who will strike their arrows, a people who will not back off, a people who will not shut up, a people who are filled with passion and zeal to see the word of the Lord come to pass. If America's going to turn, he's got to find a bunch of crazy, full of the Spirit of God, obey him no matter what, people. And I believe he's found some in, in Amarillo, Texas. Can you say amen? amen? The degree of victory is oftentimes left up to us. I want you to say that. Say the degree of victory is oftentimes left up to me. Mm -hmm. According to your faith may be done unto you. I don't even like those scriptures because I want God to just do it. Lord, if you even love me, Lord, oh Lord. Some of you have a, a jacked up view of the sovereignty of God. You rest on your laurels expecting, God, expecting him to kick the devil out of your house. Can I tell you something? Jesus isn't coming to kick the devil out of your house. You know why? Because he already defeated the devil on his home playing field. He was, he was crucified. He took the keys of hell, death, and the grave. And he gives you authority. And you need to take the authority and drive him out. 
You drive them out of your heart. You drive them out of your mind. You drive them out of your home. You drive them out of your relationships. You drive them out of the city. You drive them out of the church. You get filled with the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. And you say in the name of Jesus, you must go. You must go. Well, I just want the Lord to come and set me free. What do you want him to come and die on a cross again? He already died on a cross. You're important. Come on, say I'm important to God. If, people, if this city's going to turn, then he's got to find somebody like you all to turn it. You've got to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Everybody say be sensitive. When I was irritated at going to see that old, about to make $3 million. Can you imagine? <laughs> the church about to make $3 million on that day that I didn't want to go home and nap. Pretty expensive nap I almost had. And the only reason, the only reason, it, the only reason it happened is it's the mercy and grace of God. And I think because we pray. And I've found there's times when I'm about to have some of the biggest breakthroughs of my life, I get so irritated. Some of you, you'll have a spirit of irritation come on you right before you're going to have a breakthrough. Is that just me? All right, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> Timing, being sensitive to his spirit. We built this building, a key moment, talking about being sensitive to the spirit, a key moment was the fire department wouldn't let us occupy the building. It had a number of challenges and they were flexing. It had a, a new uh, fire marshal that was about to be installed. The old fire marshal was a great guy and he had been tremendous and helpful and all that, but it got to the place where they're not gonna give us occupancy. Now, if you don't get occupancy, you can't use the building. So I have this building that's sitting there, very costly. Can you imagine building you know, your dream home and then you get to live in the home you're in and pay for your new one, but you can't move in. And you can't sell the one you're in because you still need it. That's where we're at. And I had a dream. And in my dream, I saw Lady Justice. How many of you know who Lady Justice is? Blindfolded. There's a two-tier justice system now, but anyway, heaven has one tier of justice. Can you say amen? amen? And Lady Justice is blindfolded and she's holding a scale and, and, and the scales go up and down. And I saw in this dream the church building on one side and the congregation on the other. And I saw it like this, that the congregation was heavier and weightier than the building. And in my dream, I saw it shift. And the Lord said, get in the building. Now I knew what that meant. That meant that that building is about to become too heavy for us to be able to handle it. And I saw the strategy of the enemy was to dribble us along, keep us from moving in, continue to allow us to make giant payments on a building we can't use, and one little knit after the next begin to keep us from moving in. And I saw it. And we were praying. We started, I shared that in morning prayer that we have seven days a week. I shared it. I said, we, we need to pray. We bond, we loose, we prayed. I'll never forget being in the Hawaiian Islands with my pastor, Dr. James Morocco. I think he's preached here before. He's been my pastor since I got saved. And he says to me, Daniel, go visit the fire department. Now I had been working through our general contractor and we had had conversations and meetings with the fire department, but I'd never actually been in the fire department and met him. So I go back and it just so happens that the fire department's boss was the borough mayor who went to our church and boy I wanted to pull some strings pastor I just want to say hey can you just like fix these guys and just fix it for Jesus I didn't do that because that's corrupt and we didn't do that but I did ask her I said hey mayor Edna can you help me get get in to have a meeting with these guys she said I can help you pastor so she called set it up they called me. I'm going to meet the following day. We can't get in our building. There's going to be no grand opening and nothing happening. And we're, we're, we're deadlocked. I go to bed that night. and I say, God, you've got to speak to me. Lord, I don't even know what to do in this meeting other than like cry and beg. No, that's really where we were at. I'm like, I needed mercy. We needed mercy. How many of you know you don't need, you, you don't need justice. You want mercy. I go to sleep and I have a dream. 
talking about being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, talking about discerning these God moments, talking about knowing when you're being handed a bow and some arrows and the prophet's hand are coming upon you, talking about being sensitive to these God moments, these divine timings. You've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you've got to look to him to speak to you so you're aware of him. Some of you sleep through stuff. Some of you are so irritated and annoyed and you missed your divine appointment like I almost did. I go to sleep that night and I have a dream. And in my dream, I go down to the fire department, I walk into the fire department, I meet the secretary. Never met her before in my life, I meet her, hi. She says, we're glad you're here, Pastor Daniel. And I, I walk into the meeting room and out comes the, the main head guy, the, the fire marshal and his assistant. They both come out, he's got a set of plans. He comes, I walk up to him in my dream and they say, sit down, Pastor, we're gonna discuss your project. And in my dream, I said, can I talk to you privately in the back in your office for a moment, off the record? He says, yes. I go in the back. I tell him my story. I tell him my testimony. And I tell him the testimony of the property, like I just told you. And I tell him about how the lives and people are being changed and transformed. I tell him the whole story. Power of God falls in my dream in his office. And everything changes. When I wake up, I'm like, that's quite a dream. Okay, Lord. So I go down. I walk into the office. It's, um, I walked into my dream. I don't know how else to describe it. Like when the door opened, I freaked out like, oh, 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 it's my dream. I'm literally walking in the literal dream that I had. I meet the lady that I met in my dream. She's the secretary. We're so glad you're here, Pastor Daniel. I'm like, thanks. They walk me over. The two guys come out just like in my dream. He's holding a set of plans just like in my dream. He says, why don't you sit down and we'll discuss your project and that's the part of my dream where I'm supposed to say, can I talk to you off the record? So they said, would you sit down? So we'll discuss your project. And they're waiting for my answer and I'm in shock. And I kid you not, they're looking at me. And I'm thinking, it's my dream. And I'm in shock. I'm like, Lord, it's my dream. And the Lord spoke to me and said, son, do the dream. I went, Could we just talk off the record in your back office for a second? And he says, he looks at his assistant and says, sure. We go in the back office. I tell him my testimony. He sits back in his chair. His eyes have tears. I tell him the story of the church and the power of God floods his office. And then he tells me, he says, now since we're off the record, that's quite a story. I said, yes. And I want to save lives just like you. God puts these words in my mouth. I said, help me get in the building. And he said, pastor, let's go. He stands up, picks up, plans up. We walk back in and the whole thing changed. The whole thing changed. I'm telling you, there's moments in God, divine moments. You've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Precious couple right there, stand up on your feet. Yeah, big strapping guy. The Lord says you're huge. No, come over here. Come here. <laughs> come here. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. How are you? Bless you. Tell me your name. Ryan. Ryan, you're uh, walking right into your season. Been a challenging time the past uh, even six months to a year, but you're walking right into something brand new. And I brought you here to be encouraged, says the Lord. I'm going to reveal some things to you. You're about to have a series of dreams over these next, you dream. And you're about to have a series of dreams that God's going to soften your heart, tender your heart. There's some things he wants to heal you from. You're big and strong, obviously, but he's making you big and strong in the spirit. The truth is you're just as tender, tender hearted and sensitive to the things of the spirit of God. And I'm going to use you, says the Lord. I've marked out times and seasons, and I've set you in this place to hear this word, to know that it's time for your discipleship. It's time for you to take the next step of commitment, and it's time for you to move forward. And as you do, I'm going to use you to touch the lives of so many people. You will be a Jesus that they never see anywhere else, and I will use you and I will satisfy the deepest longings of your heart. I'm healing you, says God. I'm restoring that which was taken, Joel 2, 25. I'll restore all the years, all the years that the locusts have taken. Brokenhearted and in many ways, discouraged depression visits you almost every single winter. But this winter, no more. Lift your hands, sweetheart. I command this thing in Jesus' name.
loose. What are we talking about? Talking about divine. So they wouldn't have had that had they not come. Don't miss tomorrow night. Don't miss the next night. You say, I got work. Call in sick. Lie and do whatever you got to do. Liars go to hell. I know. But everybody do whatever you got to do. Because it'll ramp up for you. It's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. The presence of God, the power of God, miracles. So you got to be sensitive. Everybody say, lift your hands to heaven and say, God, make me sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You've got to be hungry for God. If you're not hungry for God, if you're not hungry for God, something's wrong. The very word for soul is nefesh. Well, Hebrew, nefesh and neshama means thirsty. You say, well, I'm not thirsty and I'm not desperate. I'm not hungry. Well, I remember saying that to the Lord. God, I'm really not a lot dusty. It's no problem. I can help you with that. I love how the Lord sets up circumstances for me, and I believe he does it for you too, where you get to a place, if you're moving forward in God, that you can't do the next thing. You can't do in the natural what needs to be done in Henderson. Is that right? Hendersonville, Henderson land. (laughs) You can't do in the natural what needs to be done, but God through you. I'm about to reinvent you, says the Lord. John, the beloved of God. John, right? That's not, I I don't get names too often. I heard your name and I remembered it. For anybody that thinks, I was like, wow, he got his name. No, I did. (laughs) That's uh, that's for the next guy that's coming on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss that. P.O. boxes, social security numbers. Anyway. You love the spirit of God. You love the word of God. The Lord says, the keys to that city, I'll give to you. If you'll continue to contend and fight and pray, I'm moving you to a place of militancy because it's going to be a militant pastor and a militant church that takes that place. I see witchcraft like fires all around that place and the hills. I see... uh, I see opposition, but there really is no opposition. There's no giant. There's no fire. There's nothing that can hinder the move of the Spirit of God when, when he flows, when he moves. But there's a tremendous battle. And there's been uh, even indiscretions in other churches that's about to be exposed. Ooh, did I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. <clears throat> I'm just broadcasting everywhere. It's going to be shouted from the rooftop, and I'm going to give you a heart of compassion to minister to the, the broken and those that are even spurned. Some of those accusations are accusations only that will come, and I'm going to use you as a friend that sticks closer than a brother to even some that are around you. There's like a pastor prayer thing. Uh, that's there. I don't know if you're a part of it. You need to be careful not to get sucked into some religious nonsense. But there's a genuine group of guys that'll pray. And I see God's power coming down as you contend. I'm putting keys in your hands, says the Lord, to unlock the harvest. Souls, 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 souls. Leaders, 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 leaders. Multiply your leadership. Multiply multiply and I'm going to visit you with fresh fire and power it's not a stepping stone so don't ever think about it like that and I'm sure you're not that's never what we should be thinking about but you are in the school the seminary of the spirit and I'm going to release my power and miracles will flow and that house will be known for miracles lift both hands You've asked for it. You've asked me for it. And I've heard your cry. And I plead the blood over you. And You married? Your wife. You got kids? Your child. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. 
It'll start in a prayer movement and it'll be a fresh wind that'll blow. Saul's armor just won't fit you, so don't ever try to wear it. You follow the structure under the authority that you've been given, but there's a unique anointing on your life and you're gonna find it, you're gonna tap it. You've only scraped the surface and I'm gonna release power and miracles through you, says the Lord. Come on, you, you gotta get hungry. That's hungry, that, that's somebody who's hungry. I can tell, I can tell hungry people, you know who I know? There's a draw, there's something supernatural where they draw from the spirit. I can feel it begin to happen. The atmosphere shifted just a bit here. You gotta get hungry, like the woman with the issue of blood. Talking about divine timing, talking about God moments, talking about this king who didn't understand, didn't discern his role in releasing victory like many of us don't understand our role because we have a, a faulty theology about the sovereignty of God that we just want him to do it. That is not how this church is built. That's not how our nation will turn. Our nation turns by touching people like this, setting them on fire, giving them courage and zeal for the house of the Lord, and then releasing them into the nation to touch and change lives. Henderson will be touched and changed by the power and the fire. They don't need another church, another dead church. Not that yours is dead, it's not. They need an on-fire display of, of solid preaching and teaching, theological truth with demonstration of the Spirit. That's you. That's what, that's what we need. And being sensitive to the Spirit and know that God is going to move in power in your family if He touches the likes of you. And don't get a big head about it. He used a donkey. Oh, oh, oh. You're like, well... Well, I just got back from my meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. A lot of people I healed. He's cruising for a bruise and some chastisement from the throne room heading your way. Hungry. Everybody say, Lord, help me be hungry. I don't think the king was hungry. And I've noticed in praying for people, years ago I told you I came out from under a, a dumpster fire. I might have been in the dumpster without telling my whole story. And when Pastor Karen and I were raised up and many years ago, they started releasing us to pray for people in the service. And I remember distinctly praying for people that were like cinder blocks. I mean, you might as well lay hands on a brick wall. Because that's about was like thud, a stump, ain't nothing there. They couldn't wait for me to move on to the next person so Dr. Morocco could come and pray and then they'd get touched and healed. Their perception about me was, oh, that's the dumpster fire guy. Other people had a perception, they didn't know me from when I crawled in in a pair of ripped shorts, broken. They didn't know me from then. But the people that knew me from when I was broken, they're like, oh, it's Danny. You know, they come to pray. Well, how can I pray for you? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for Dr. Morocco. Okay, well, he's going to come, but be, can I pray for you? Well, you can give it a shot if you want. Go ahead. And I'd pray. Nothing would happen. Go two people down. They're like, oh, oh, thank God it's you. I prayed that you would be the guy to pray for me. I'm like, hallelujah. <laughs> what do you want God to do for you? They're like, I just believe that when you pray, I'm going to get delivered. That's because you are. Lift your hands. Wham! Power, fire, demonstration. Two, two, two doors over, zip. One, it's a perception. You've got to change your perception and you've got to get hungry. Woman with the issue of blood pushed aside all the vaccination laws. <laughs> she pushed, pushed aside all the regulations, pushed... Listen, if you want to get vaccinated, go right ahead. If you don't want to get vaccinated, go right ahead. There's nothing wrong. You, it's America. You do whatever you feel led of the Lord to do. Just don't make me try to do what you want. Don't make me. Don't take the vax. Don't take it. But I'm highly opposed to somebody. I'd never tell you what to do or force you to do anything. This is America. Can I get an amen, right? I wouldn't force you to wear a mask. I wouldn't force you to social distance. I wouldn't force you to take a jab. But I'm telling you, 
Don't take any more of them. This is just me saying them. I'm telling you what to do. As your pastor, I love you. And it's a nefarious action against your life. Don't take any more of them. And we're believing God there'll be no ill effects because Jesus is bigger than Pfizer or Moderna or the government or some scared, faithless leader in your workforce. Don't do it again. Says the angel of the church. (laughs) Don't do it. I'm just trying to be gentle, not in my own house. That's all. Thank you, Pastor, for setting the record straight. I've done enough funerals myself. I said I've done enough funerals myself. The point is, back to my message, is that the woman with the issue of blood spent all she had But in her heart, she was so desperate, so hungry. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, violated all Levitical law, pressed through the crowd to touch the hem of his garment and release power. Your hunger, your desperation, when it's sincere, doesn't give a flip if you look like a fool in the face of your peers. So long as you're embraced in the arms of the master and you see your flood of blow, you see your flood of, your your flow of blood, pardon me, your flow of blood stopped. When you're hungry and you're thirsty, you don't care. You just don't care. Lift your hands. I'll be back. You don't care when you're hungry and thirsty. I'm talking about divine timing. I'm talking about divine moments in God, kairos moments, time and destiny. They're here. There's one right now. I'm not going to preach until three in the morning. We're going to flow into a time of ministry now. But you've got to be enthusiastic. Lean in. He said it. Pastor said it. Lean in. Some of you have been sitting back for years. You're like, well, I've been in the church for... I've been in the church for years. I ain't asking them. (laughs) Get out of your head, son. Close your eyes. I've been in the way. Yeah, you've been in the way, all right? You ever heard that expression where they used to call the church, the first century church, they called the way? Where are you going? <laughs> you should just stand next to him. Here, right here. Yeah, right here, right here. He's all right. We got him. We'll get some other usher. You're all right. You're, 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 you're okay. Uh, I remember you. Tell me your name again. Jake, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. (laughs) Thought I was going to have to drop you. I didn't know what was going on right there for a second. (laughs) But I discerned he had the Holy Ghost on him, so I thought I'd probably be all right. Come on, lift your hands all across this place. Say, Lord, help me never to miss moments in God. Say, Lord, help me to be sensitive to your spirit. Just let heaven come out of that thing, son. Want to be used by you, Lord. Your education will be unique. Not a normal education. You're in school now. I'm in the school of the Spirit. There's no toxic levels in God. You can go as deep and wide as you want. The Lord says, Son, the next step for you is 
a step of separation unto sanctification, meaning that he wants you to step out of some relationships and to put aside some extra time in worship, prayer. It's going to become so beautiful, the Lord shows me. that you won't be able to help but hurry up and get back to your room and get back, get back to that place. I caution you to say, you don't need to be rude to anybody. Just start going to that place. You're organized, you're detailed, make a plan, write it down. And you set aside some time management. I'm gonna help you with time management. You're doing a lot, but you mark out time where it's you, and the Lord and not just you talking some, some people just don't shut up enough to hear him I could have said that nicer so, I'm coming to you Bishop Butler pastors like 25 churches I think originally from Detroit went in the ministry I think when he was 19 freshly married newly married when he was 18 he got baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit he went home he went underneath his kitchen table and prayed in tongues all night long end of the morning in the wee hours of the morning God showed him the entire plan for his life and it was a blueprint a pattern that he would follow and it's to this day the revelation of the mystery was revealed to him and the Lord shows me that you son are going to receive revelation of the mystery the call of God if you do what this word encourages you to do I pray Holy Spirit There's a powerful word on the inside of you. You're known for being a spirit-filled man. You're righteous. You, you walk rightly. There's something excellent about you. Business, 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 increase, multiplication, yes. But there's also the, the business of the Father. And the Lord says, I'm going to open up some marketplace opportunities for you to share your faith. There's a gift of faith that's on the inside of you. And I'm releasing that gift of faith. That which you've been doing, is been, it's been good. It's multiplying, but like a flywheel. Do you know what a flywheel is? It takes a lot of energy to push that thing around. But when it comes, it kicks. And I see this thing coming around with a kick tremendous momentum and blessing you're to make some plans and I'm going to partner you up even with some that are older and wiser than you because you need that wisdom if you'll double your prayer time I'll double your increase <laughs> I'm going to say it again you double your prayer time I will double your increase because without that prayer you won't be able to handle what I'm going to flow through you I've been building character in you for years. And there's been some disappointments and different things that you've overcome. You turned the other cheek, turned the other cheek. You ran out of cheeks. And I just hear the Lord saying, well done. I'm going to increase you. Double your prayer. I'll double your increase. And like a flywheel, that thing will come around, but you will have a capacity to handle it. In the midst of that, there will be like a, a, a threshing floor experience where it's so glorious. But there'll be a separation too because there's some chaff of those that were even once would stand by you. They'll, you'll find that they just don't want to be near you anymore. And that can be challenging and difficult. But I am your best friend.
your home is filled with your wife here come aren't you like the yogurt people or something no no is it tea or something <laughs> okay here come right come right under here <laughs> These guys related to you? Okay, my memory's coming back. That's not a word of knowledge. I'm just like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. How are you? What do you got there? It's gonna prophesy baby, but is that I, I, I learned better than that. Are you pregnant? Thank God. Oh, come on, give them praise. I don't know if you've ever been there before. Preacher one-on-one, -on -one, don't ever ask that question. Don't, don't ever do that. But the Lord loves me. So he had mercy. Put your hands on your baby. Gonna sing, gonna dance. My gosh, beautiful, beautiful child. Healthy baby, healthy mother. God, thank you. We bless this family. And this marketplace thing is gonna expand. Both of you are in it. It's going to expand and you're gonna teach and you're gonna preach. You need to, you need to graft the church stuff into the business stuff too. It's not just, hear me. He's not gonna bless you just for the sake of blessing you. He blesses you for the sake of the house of the Lord. And I see God marrying the two together. Your business is ministry and ministry is business and, and he's gonna give you a platform to share principles in, for marriage, for child raising, for business, double your prayer, I'll double your increase. Holy Spirit, stand where you are, right where you are. Need a miracle. Oh my God, I mean, healing's a miracle. A creative miracle. Whatever kind of healing you need, lift your hands to heaven. Holy Spirit. on by who you are and my desire is to know you Jesus and Lord I will open up release your power right now throw my fears into the wind I am desperate for a touch of hand. I want to pray for each and every one of you but I'm going to do this a particular way the whole back section, if you want prayer, you want the ministry laying out of hands, you want to be healed, step out from where you are as Daniel continues to sing. Just the back section, you're in the riser, riser section. Come all the way up. I need ushers, please. As you come, lift your hands, and as you do, God's power comes on you right now give me a little give me a, a little aisle right in front of them there you go give me a little space to walk back there holy spirit right now shoulder to shoulder right all the way across the line i'm gonna come and lay hands on you god's gonna touch you and when i lay hands on you i want your faith level to be at the place where it's like jesus is laying his hands on you Nobody standing behind anybody, please. And that whole middle section, we're going to pray for you next. Worship with all your heart, son. 
Go on, Briley. Cause all I want is to live with Holy Ghost, release your power right now. Sickness, infirmity, disease, every ailment, all pain, knees, joints, heart condition, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, diabetes. I am desperate for Go. a touch of Green. Fire. God's healing people. Woo. Oh, he's doing an overhaul in your whole life. Three, two, healing flow. Now, check yourself. Check yourself. See if there's been improvement. Holy Spirit. Stay. Middle section, come on up. Come on, come on, come on. 
on. How is that? Okay, what? You get a torn rotator cuff. What happened? Uh, it was an injury from about 10 years ago. Um, How is it now? Better. Uh, better. I love the honesty. Because I can't stand that hyper evangelist thing. You're better now. And they drag the guy off. He's dragging his leg. I'm healed. I'm healed. And he's dragging his leg. Better is, is better than not improved. So give me a percentage. 75%, 75 healed on his shoulder. 10-year-old injury. Come on, listen. He made the earth in six days and he rested on the seventh. It should be no problem for him to totally heal you, restore you, touch you, deliver you in less than 15 seconds. Lift your hands. Come on, worship, worship, worship. Fill in this section for those that are in that middle part that you want prayer. If you want prayer in the middle, come all the way up right in here. Leave me an aisle. All right, let's go. your emotions and I'm going to restore even by the time Christmas comes this year you will see a tremendous homecoming believe it
presence of the Lord is here. If you have to slip out, I understand. Don't you miss tomorrow night. Don't you miss Tuesday night. Don't you miss Wednesday. This service is almost concluded, but people are getting miracles right now. There's nothing on TV that you can't queue up and watch later. Right now. Yeah, just sit all the way back and take a seat. A couple more steps. There you go. Right into his presence. Worship him, worship him. Yes. 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 Something's happening right now. Intercessors praying, people. Come on. Like the woman. Like the woman with the issue of blood. You press in right now. Take it. Yeah, he needed a push. It's a new season. The old is gone and the new has come. And I'm forming, I'm fashioning, I'm making something on the inside of you that you would have never seen before. I brought you into this place and I've washed you and I've cleansed you and I've put my word in your heart. And you are even a part of the lineage of faith that those of those that have prayed, you should be dead. You shouldn't even be standing here. But the Lord says, my son, I'm taking you now and I'm moving you to a new place, a new place of intimacy, a new place of knowledge, a new place of wisdom. And you're to put your hand to the plow. Don't worry and don't be concerned and don't fret of the past season and the past time where there's been where's been wasted moments and wasted times and missed seasons this is your moment this is your god moment and i'm putting fire on you and i'm putting favor on you you do your part i will do mine you can't do my part i won't do yours says the lord i'm putting fire and zeal on the inside of you and you're gonna see a tremendous transformation not only in your own life but in your family, for you will be like a stone that's thrown into a pond and the ripples affect all those, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. But there's been like an ineffectiveness in reaching them with the God who so touched you. But I'm redoing you. I'm renewing you. I'm refashioning you. I'm making you into a new sharp threshing sledge, a new sharp threshing instrument, and you will be a tremendous evangelist in this house. Wow. That was for a number of you. Be healed. Be made. I'm going to raise up dread champions, says the Lord. This is the interpretation. I'm raising up dread champions from among you. I'm putting my hand upon your sons and your daughters. I'm putting my hands upon your life in such a way that you've never seen what I'm going to do. What, what I'm going to do. Eye is not seen. Ear is not heard. What God has prepared in advance for His church Amarillo and His church Owensboro. God is God has not ever done this kind of thing. He's doing, that's a different church. Dread champions. That was quite a word. Lift your hands. So precious. Precious faith. More. Pastor, 
because sometimes in services there's like a certain swirl of different places like like right there if you don't know Jesus tonight man if you don't know Jesus tonight you need to give your life to him before I turn the service back and over to pastor online those here under the sound of my voice if you've never given your life to Christ you need to give your life to him tonight you say well I have given my life to him good are you on fire if you're not on fire you've lost your first love then come back to him tonight if you've never given your life to Christ I implore you I plead with you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled he was crucified for your sin and mine he died on a cross he rose again from the grave to as many as believed in him the word of God says he gave them the right to become children of God not everybody's God's child listen closely not everyone's God's child everyone's made in his image yes but you become his child by being born again you must be born again and if you can't remember when you gave your life to Christ and you born again then you probably didn't because it's not the kind of thing that you ever forget and I remember somebody saying to me just recently, I prayed that, what is it, that sinner's prayer? I prayed that prayer like 10 times, ain't nothing happened. That's right, Jethro. And the reason nothing happened is because you didn't really repent. It's not some magic. It's not magic. It's faith. It's repentance. It's repentance. It's believing on the Lord Jesus and he was crucified for your sin and he rose again from the grave and then you acknowledge the fact that you're the one that crucified him along with me and everyone who sinned for all has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are the ones that put him on that cruel cross and you're the one that has to come. You, yourself, not with your mom, not with your dad. You'll stand before the judgment seat to give account for your life. You, you alone. Nobody will be standing with you. And if on that day, the blood of Jesus is not covered over your sin. You will go to hell. It was never created for you, but that is the biblical truth. There's only one sin that God can't forgive you of. Just one. You know what it is? Not receiving his son. And some of you fight it and fight and half-heartedly walk with him. Don't do it. Give your life to Jesus for the first time tonight on the count of three, if that's you, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. Number two, if you're not living for God, you maybe have received him at a kid's camp or a youth camp, or, but you know you're not on fire. You know that you lost your first love. You need to recommit tonight. You need to recommit your life on the count of three. I also want you to raise your hand. And the third group I'm calling out to before I turn this back over to pastor, is if you're just not sure, the enemy lies to you and you're not sure, wanna give your heart to Jesus for the first time, you're going to raise your hand at the count of three. Number two, you're going to recommit your life because you're not as on fire as you used to be and you want to come back. You want to recommit. Maybe you've got compromise. Number, number three, you're going to sell out and you're going to be sure. You want to be sure. One, two, do it now. Three. God bless you. God bless you. Raise your hand high so I can see it. God bless you. 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 Let me see that hand. Don't put that hand down until I see you. Come on, son. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can I have a little room in the altar here for a second? Thank you. Thank you. Lift your hand high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put over on this side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, I'm the guest preacher. You can put your hands down. I think I got everybody. I'm the guest. I leave shortly, although I'm family also. I will come and get you if you don't get up here right now when I ask you to. Come right now. Come. Why? Because there's something about coming. I don't want to manipulate you. I'm not trying to force you to do something, but come right now. If you're serious about it, come to Jesus. Don't make me come down there. Come on, come, 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 come. Close, close, close. Come on. 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 Church, you ought to go bananas right now. Come on. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come on, come. It's a new day. It's a new day. Prophetic word over this couple right here. There was some things that were stolen from you, like land or inheritance or some, see something that was taken? It's going to be given back. Uh, that which was lost is going to be returned, says the Lord. Amen. Pastor, would you come and lead these beautiful people to Christ? Put your hands together for your pastor. Come on, let's just bow our heads right where we are. We're calling people right now. You've come to...
put your faith in Jesus. Repent of your sins. Call on the name of the Lord. Some of you are here for a fresh commitment. You're going to rededicate your life right now to the Lord. Some of you are here because you want to completely surrender. And he's worthy of our surrendering to our admonition, our submitting our life unto his lordship. So many of you tonight, tonight, where you're crossing a line into another level of lordship, where you're putting yourself down so you could lift him up and you can have his life in every area. So right now we're going to cry out. All of you, we're going to cry out to him together. I want you to say this. Say, Father, I repent. I turn from my way, my sin me having what I want I turn to what you want I believe that Jesus is the Lord of my life I believe on his death on his burial on his resurrection for my salvation come into my life save me heal me fill me with your spirit change me now I rededicate I pledge my life afresh and anew unto you tonight I say you are my Lord I'm your servant tonight I'm being marked by your presence I'm being changed from the inside out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I pray amen now hold on yeah yeah hold on just lift a hand to heaven those of you that just came down here Lift a hand to heaven. I'm telling you, there's, there's like a, like a, you're going to start to sense a presence and a power and an oil. It's going to come on you right now. I'm telling you, there's a separation that's occurring in the world right now where God's already beginning to separate the wheat from the tares and the clean from the unclean. And the fish, the net's been cast into the water, drawn out. And the clean fish and the unclean fish, there's a separation right now. The power and the Spirit and the wind of God's beginning to do a deep work in you and on you and around you. I'm telling you, God is touching you. God is moving on you. God is breathing on you. The power and the Spirit of the living God is coming and doing what only He can do in your life. So breathe in His presence. Just breathe it in right there into your lungs. Breath of life. Coming into you afresh. Man, we bless you. Release our faith for you. God's changing you from the inside out. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the church said, amen, amen. Hey, aren't y'all proud, all these people, making this decision for Jesus? How many are thankful they're all down here, stepping across lines, different kinds of lines? Everybody's stepping across them in the name of Jesus. Listen, some of you just prayed to receive Christ. Um, some of you came and rededicated your life. If some of our people could come with the 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 books right there. We want to give them, give everybody down here, I want to give everybody down here one of these books. If we got enough tonight, there's cards there, praying to receive Christ. I want you to fill that card out and then I want you to bring it when you're done. I want you to lay it on this altar. But take one of these books with you and you can go back to your seat. Once you get it filled out, bring it back up here and lay it on this altar. We're going to dismiss this service in just one more moment. Come on, let's give them one more big hand clap. Amen. Amen. Here's what uh, I want you to do. I want you to be seated in the house of God for one second. Just be seated in the house of God. Uh, how many of y'all enjoyed tonight? How many of y'all were ministered to tonight, man? Isn't that incredible? How many of y'all want to strike the arrow when the time is right? Amen? Don't lay back. What Pastor Daniel doesn't know is that that's a significant word for his church. And we were in my office uh, way back. Me, Pastor John, Pastor Jordan, all of us were there. And I was thinking about this text and I was walking around the back of the Owensboro building and they were already in having a staff meeting. I come walking in through the back of my office and I'm thinking about the very text that Pastor Daniel just preached at. I was saying it out loud to myself as I walked into my office. And I was thinking about whether I was just going to pastor just only in Owensboro, Kentucky, or whether I was going to come and do this in Amarillo, Texas. And, and I felt like God was calling us to plant more churches. And I walk into the office and Pastor John 
is saying the same text to the church, to, to the staff meeting right there. The text that he preached tonight, the one that was on my mind, and I was talking about to myself when I walked around. Pastor John's talking about the same text whenever I walk into the room. And I knew that God was speaking to us that we were to take an arrow and we were to strike the ground, not just once, not just twice, not just three times, but to strike it as many times as we could. When I heard it, it was a prophetic moment. Whenever I walked in the room, I heard it and I fell. I said, listen, I, I got to respond. They're all standing there. I fell on my face in the middle of my office and I took my fist and I started striking the ground, striking the ground, striking the ground. Come on, striking the ground, striking the ground, striking the ground, striking the ground. Now I struck the ground till my fist began to bleed. I struck it for like an hour. John and Jordan hit the ground with me. I said, they saw that I couldn't do it anymore. They're like, we'll strike it now. And we stayed in my office striking the ground till almost all of our hands were black and blue and bloody. We were saying, God, we don't want it our way. We want it your way. If you say come, we'll respond. You say strike, we'll strike. You say fire an arrow, we'll fire the arrow. You say prophesy, we'll prophesy. Come on, somebody. You, you say give, we'll give. You say pray, we'll pray. You say fast, we'll fast. You say so, we sow. You say walk into a war zone and preach. We'll walk into the war zone and preach. We'll strike the arrow. So I know it's, 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 it's the arrow of his deliverance. And you got to respond whenever it's hot and it's here. So many people let moments like this pass them by. Don't let it pass you by. Remember, you, you got a time to operate when God calls you. you got to operate then. We made the decision to come by faith and do what we're doing right now. And I'm telling you what, what you see right now is only a bit of what God's going to do in this house, in our life, in your family, in our destiny. So God's going to multiply the work. Can I get an amen? Souls of faith, of lives changed, rearranged. He's going to multiply the work. And we're going to strike the arrow. Tonight, I want us to all strike. Come on, somebody say, I want to strike the arrow. Amen. Come on, a, a, a thousand times. Can I get an amen out there? I'm going to strike it. That, that king didn't respond, and because of it, his nation wasn't delivered. If he would have responded, man, there would have been massive victory. His enemies would have been given to him. I tell you, I don't want to live a life where my enemies get the best of me. I intend by the power of my God and the gospel of Jesus to get the best of my enemies, the devil, right? We're going to get the best. We're going to plunder hell, and we're going to fill heaven.